I need the certificate. Can you just write the certificate that I'm okay to go into space, please? The doctor is so, like, anti doing this. He's like, are you sure you want to go back into the cold? Like, and um, he even says something to him like, I don't know what you're after, but I hope you die before you find it or something like that. It's like he thinks Picard's nuts for wanting to go back into space at his age and have another other adventure i i like the scene a lot i thought it was a really nice character building scene between picard and his doctor what'd you guys think about this scene i liked it and i like you know they threw in the stargazer so then for those of us that knows what he's talking about it's like okay that's how they know each other and you know even if you don't really know it's kind of like okay that miss means they probably work together so it's mm-hmm. kind of cool and this guy it's helpful that this guy is like a character actor that's on so many things because you just think he looks familiar i had to go back and look at his imdb yes. i was so sure he'd been in a star yes. trek episode and he hasn't been but he's he's like that guy yep. he's that actor who's yep. been in everything yep. and i was so I sure he'd been in star trek at some point i remember when they, this image leaked of him there everybody was theorizing that he was the traveler oh. I, I, don't, I don't know why i guess it was further away i don't know and 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 i you know I, I don't think that they really looked similar one is probably like a foot taller than the other one i think but um I, it, it's funny that you guys mentioned that that he kind of looks like every other random guy that was in you know the background in the 80s yes. but you, like you said as soon as you saw his face you're like yeah i know this guy and uh, it's not from star trek actually so no he's from every other show you've ever seen but not from star trek i thought it was uh, a cool i think the picture that leaked it was hard to really see him very well like it was sort of yeah, shadowed definitely. some you know, um, when they were sitting there, it's yeah. hard to tell. I mean, if anything, he looked more like Kaczynski, right? who was who was the guy that the traveler was traveling with. Um, he he didn't the the actor who played the traveler. I mean, very different body type, but he he looked a little bit kind of like Kaczynski. But um, I, I could see why people were like, "Oh, maybe it's the traveler." Yeah. Well, I I just wanted to say I really liked uh, seeing like old friends that are not. Um, you know, just throw-ins from TGN or whatever. I, I, I feel like Picard is on an island here. Mm-hmm. And I, I know that he has those two people, the Romulans that 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 are with him, that are dear friends and look like they'll they'll go to war for him or do anything for him. But it was really nice to see an old friend, especially after the scene where he sees, you know, you know, where he sees the admiral. And you're like, this is not the revered Picard that we're used to. And it was, I, I just think it was really nice, like, to see an old friend and, and know that, that he's not alone, that the old Picard is still, you know, still has his friends that, that can pull some strings for him, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I enjoy that, too. It's, um, I, I like scenes of, like, in any show, really, I enjoy that scene of the, our main character sitting down with an old friend to, like, reminisce. I, I usually enjoy those scenes as well myself. Um, so next we jump to San Francisco Starfleet headquarters and we know it's San Fran because of the Golden Gate Bridge, which is always shown whenever they're in Starfleet headquarters. Um, and we do get some great, um, classic Trek music here from the, from the films, uh, which was really nice to hear that theme. Um, and Picard uh, has, a, has a meeting there. He goes up to the desk and he's like, I have a meeting. And the guy's like, your name? Like, so like to, to your point, Stephen, like, it's not like people are like, oh, it's Admiral Picard. People aren't really re- recognizing him. He's not that guy anymore. Um, so that when he says, you know, my name is Picard and he spells it out and he's like, oh, nice to see you up and about, Admiral. And, and Picard's like, I'm not an old geezer you know i mean like i mean i'm old but i'm not like useless yeah Um, but like you you gotta you gotta think that in that world where that guy exists mm -hmm. like the old captain or admiral picard is gone oh sure like so it's yeah he's not an old decrepit man but to to many people that he's he's he's, he doesn't exist anymore so yeah and 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 he's quite young that that kid behind the desk i mean you know we 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 would often like 
would talk about like mentioning stuff in Kirk's time. It was like, oh, that was required reading at the academy. You know, can can you imagine like when that kid went through the academy? Did he have to read stuff about Captain Picard and and be like, oh, I read about you in my history books? Like, or you did know, they eliminate? Was- did they eliminate some of that required oh, course because you know question. he left he left in shame or whatever? I I don't know. Right. You know. Yeah, can can you imagine them kind of like uh, redacting some stuff or or just pulling it out of the history books? Is like this is embarrassing. You know, he leaves Starfleet in protest because he says that we're not Starfleet anymore. Well, we're we're not going to give him that attention. Yeah, I mean, for, before fourteen years ago, it could have been a required course to take a like a, a Picard or an Enterprise D course or something, right. like a required course. Sure. And now they're like they've decided to, to drop that course, you know, based on the events. Yeah, I was going to say that because that kid was so young that by the time he would have gotten there, that they definitely could have gotten rid of anything about Picard. Because, you know, Mm -hmm. it's it's been a long time, you know? It has. Yes, it has. And all you have to do is hit delete now. That's very true. (laughs) Just hit delete. So now Picard is in Admiral Clancy's office. And I have to say, the... The actress here who's playing Admiral Clancy, I really enjoyed her acting in this scene. Her body language communicated so much. So, like, he walks in. She doesn't even stand up to greet him. She just she stays sitting. And then he asks her, like, may I sit down? And so she's like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> and then you know, he starts kind of telling her this story that sounds kind of crazy. Bruce Maddox and Data and the Romulans and Dodge and exploding guns and uh, you know, secret, secret, secret police. And he basically is like, asks her for a warp capable ship and a crew he wants to be reinstated to starfleet and the more he talks the bigger her eyes get her eye acting was just so like is this guy really sitting here telling me he wants this stuff from me she went full on gowron on that <laughs> she sure did yeah she absolutely did <laughs> she got where her giant eye <laughs> she went full gowron he says, oh, and, you know, if, if my rank will draw too much attention, I'll accept being demoted to captain. I mean, that's a bit much, but okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, uh, the balls to walk into the office and say that. <laughs> I, I really like the fact that they left us in the dark and, and we as the audience basically felt like we only had we had the mindset of Picard. Because that's you know obviously who we're following in this story, mm-hmm. and Picard didn't really quite realize the impact of what he had said on the news broadcast, or you know maybe even what he have what he's done in the last fourteen years. He really hasn't, you know, he doesn't really grasp it. And when he walks into that whole building, like you said, the hubris. Like I love how like we didn't realize how this was going to go, and then we just get snapped into reality with this Admiral's response to him mm-hmm. even being in the same room as her right now, asking yeah. her for a favor. Yes. Like, are you crazy? You yeah. know, what, what, what do you mean? Like you're, you have stepped on our name for the last 10 years and continue to do so. And now you're coming to me for help. Like, but get out of my office. You know what I mean? I, I love that snap into reality. I wasn't expecting it. And I, mm. You know, I, I don't know if I was expecting a warm welcome and a positive, you know, but I definitely wasn't expecting like just a complete lashing on her part. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I was not ready for her reaction. And we kind of laughed, Brooke and I, because we do try to keep our show non-explicit sometimes with my potty mouth. I forget. There were a couple F-bombs and this was one where she she dropped it. But you know what? It fit because she could not believe I mean, as she said, the hubris. And, of course, Picard is just as shocked as we are, right? So he's, you know, she's like, you you think I didn't see your little broadcast? You think I didn't hear what you said? You know, and she, and now we get even more exposition about what happened with the Romulans, where she says that basically because the Romulans were our biggest enemy, our, our oldest enemy, There were 14 species in the Federation that said, if you don't cut the Romulans loose, we are leaving the Federation. That's huge. 14 species are going to leave the Federation because they were helping the Romulans Mm -hmm. so that when the shipyards blew up, 
this was their excuse to get out. This was their excuse to pull out of the rescue mission. Well, oh, we can't help you anymore. I'm sorry. Look what happened to us. So now here, this opens up a whole nother bag of worms. Does the possibility exist that the Federation themselves were behind the attack on Utopia Planitia? We we heard Lara say that the that the the Jalvash operate within the Federation. Could they have done this to give the Federation a way out? Is it possible? Am I insane? No. I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think? You are not insane because of this. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. other things for sure. I will. Yes, I'll co-sign that right now. <laughs> um, no, I was thinking the same thing. When I was watching this the second time. Because that was really like. There was so much to take in the first time I watched it. And I wasn't even having to take notes. And I'm like what? And so then I watched it again so I could write down like thoughts and stuff. But if Laris hadn't said that. I don't know that I would have been like. Oh yeah the Federation's got something to do with it. Until we have the other scene with the Commodore. Where maybe it does or maybe it doesn't. It's hard to tell because. Is she you know is she just like embedded or whatever. But if there is like a secret secret group. In the Federation. That's definitely something that could happen. It's like when those, the one aliens took over all of the people in the, in the Federation, like all the officers and stuff, you know, they were like worms in the back of their necks Oh, or yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. In you season know. one, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> if I remember, Tasha Yar was in it. So yeah, so it was season one. <laughs> back to Picard saying Starfleet wasn't Starfleet in the first episode. Like he knew that there was something weird going on then in that episode. Mm -hmm. It was very Picard like I think. I think if they were secret enough to be able to do things with all these different you know the Romulans and the and the Klingons and all that and be part of the Federation that they could definitely do this and make it just seem like something happened just to get the Federation out like an easy out. I don't know mm -hmm. if any of that I just sort of rambled on that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think that, okay, so you have this group that have this utter hatred for artificial life, and staging this attack by the artificial life will just strengthen their, their ground and prove a point, because just because their culture doesn't develop artificial life doesn't mean it's not dangerous at, for other cultures to also... You know what I mean? Like whatever they're protecting against, whatever fear that they have of artificial life isn't just, you know, regulated to the one section of, of their planet, of their universe. It's if somebody else develops artificial life and it gets out of hand, then that's equally sure. as bad. It just yeah. maybe take longer to get to us, but that's just equally as bad. So not only are, are, is their goal definitely to, to see, keep it off of their planet, but other you know, people not developing it. So this was obviously a huge step towards towards that, and, and they won because the Federation stopped all production on, on, on the synthetic life forms. Exactly. So definitely there's the tie there, the Romulan group, um, what are they called again? The Vash, um, the Jarvash, like, there, that tie is there for sure. The question is, and this is where it starts to become like, okay, well, is this believable? If that theory is correct, you have to assume that the people behind it cared so much about ending artificial life studies that they were willing to sacrifice millions of lives back on their home planet. Exactly. Because if you're thinking about like a major planetary disaster, I would imagine everything else has to fall to the wayside other than rescuing people and getting them to safety. But yet, at the exact same time, unless it was just happened to be planned and in motion at, at the exact same time as the supernova happened, I, I don't know. But there's, it, it's definitely not black and white. It's not cut and dry. Like these who, these are the people who planned this attack because I just, like I said, I, I think that the other people would have, they, they would have had some other things on their mind, like rescuing and the survival of their species. You know. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's going to come down to what's more important to this group, uh, saving Romulans, sa saving the Romulan Empire or whatever's left of it, or will be willing to sacrifice even Romulan lives to stop the spread of artificial intelligence. So just to wrap up this scene in the Admiral's office, um, Picard uh, tells her that the Federation does not get to decide what 
species live or die. And then she says, except that we totally do, <laughs> because her reasoning is that the people in the galaxy look to the Federation as a stabilizing and cohesive force. Um, and that if the Federation falls 